what's up uh so skull trail left me this comment actually they left me two comments uh one one where they were like hey go through your thing right go through your setup um <laughs> yeah, and then they left another one because I, 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 was, I wanted to do it all week, but I just didn't find the time, and so I said today I will do it. So it's the deadline. That was nine hours ago. So the deadline is now. Um, I just want to walk through my dev setup. Um, besides ChatGPT, I mean that's number one is GPT. No, I'm just kidding. Um, all right. So the first thing in my setup is Alacrity. Um, and I'll just go through each of these and then I'll like tie them all together. Um, so, oh, you know what? I have like a tear in reality. There we go. That's a little better. All right. So, um, Alacrity is a GPU terminal. And I like why I like Alacrity versus like WesTerm or something or even like Mac OS terminal. Um, mostly because, um, Hang on. Yeah, I like I like Alacrity mostly because um, it it's uh, the maintainers very or the maintainers are very like principled, I guess, like in what they put in um, and what they leave out. So, like, there's no tabs, right? Um, only there's they just recently put in so you could have the same window session across Mac OS. And then Mac OS has an option that lets you make everything a tab inside of a native window. So that's the only reason why it has tabs on Mac OS. <laughs> um, so you could, so I actually hit control new, right? Or command new to make new, new tabs. And then I can't switch with, I, I switch with them, uh, with, I switch them with a shift command, uh, square brace. And that's how the tabs happen. Um, so that, that actually leads me to, so Alacrity is the one because of all the stuff they leave out, right? Um, I, I did try Zellage, um, instead of the native tabs, but it was kind of slow and the locking and unlocking was kind of annoying. So I, I ditched it. Um, yeah, I, I also opted for, um, I've never tried to buy, but I did, tr I did opt for Amethyst right? Which is my, um, can I, can I actually do this? Amethyst WM. So that's just like a really, um, a really simple tiling window manager for Mac OS. Um, you can see it here. It has different, um, you know, if I, if I actually opened like a new, um, thing, uh, so it, each, each thing has like a different, so this is tall, right? And all of these are on the right side now. Um, there's a bunch of other settings too, but I usually just I just use tall full screen and tall right. Um, but there's uh, you know there's like three columns, um, four columns. You can even make it do uh, four windows in a grid, um, and you could it could do uh, binary space partitioning, which I still don't really understand what it is, but, uh, yeah, it's there. So, and then you can also like, uh, make the small windows like this window here, uh, float instead of getting like set in the thing. So like if I open like system settings, um, it floats because it knows, it knows how to float them because I've added it. Um, but yeah. That's so there's so that's two two down already, right? This oh this video is gonna take no time at all. Uh so it's it's Amethyst as the window manager for Mac OS, and then it's um I use Alacrity. Um I also have I also have uh Hammerspoon, but really it's just to map um oh sorry, yeah, we can float we can float this window. So it's really just to map um can I undo this? There we go. That's real. It's really just to map my H, J, K, and L keys to left, down, up, and right, so I don't have to like move my hand over on the keyboard. So I'll I'll hold Command. It's kind of like a it's kind of like a poor man's version of um like a, like a special type of keyboard, right? So I'll just hold Command, and then I'll, I can just do the uh, 
like first person shooter controls, right? Uh, well, I guess that's WASD, but this one's H, J, K, and L. Um, so that's the only thing I use hammer spoon for. This is the only thing, um, that's in here and it's just to remap those keys. Oh, did I? Oh yeah. Okay. There we go. So, um, the next thing is, what did I talk about? I talked about amethyst, right? Uh, tiling window manager. I, I only, I also, I should say that I like amethyst because it doesn't, you buy requires, um, you to take off sip, right? Which is, uh, Mac OS's, um, uh, security stuff, right? Oh my gosh. Can I, oh my gosh. What is this? A what is this? Like some kind of, some kind of J pop band or something. <laughs> I don't know what that is. All right. So you buy, it requires you to, um, accessibility. That's fine. But then I thought it required, yeah. System integrity, it's protection, right? It needs to be partially disabled. So for me, um, and then like all this code signing stuff, it's like, mm, I don't know, like just for window management, like it's not really, yeah, I'll just use Amethyst. So Amethyst is a window manager, Alacrity is a terminal, and I switched from Zellige, I switched from Zellige to native tabs, right? In Alacrity, cause it's fast. Um, and then the last thing is, uh, oh, Helix. Yeah, so I was using NeoVim for a long time. I had, I had a NeoVim config. Um, oh, can I show it? Maybe I can show it. Uh, dot files. Yeah, I had a NeoVim. Con I I see. I even deleted it. I had a NeoVim config, uh, but I deleted it. I mean, look at how many lines this is. Three. This is th this is almost three hundred lines, um, of code just so I could use my editor, but it still wasn't like, and then I had to like disable LSPs and you have to like configure LSPs. There's a lot of stuff that NeoVim, it's very powerful, but th that flexibility comes at the cost of like sunk time. And I feel like a lot of people keep using Vim because they've sunk so much time into it over the years that they don't want to like relearn a new key mapping thing. They don't want to relearn how to configure another editor, um, but not me. So I switched to Helix, um, uh, and I, I at first I hated it, but then I realized that it's it actually makes more sense. So I guess what, what I mean by that is like the key map, to me, like in my mind, makes more sense. Like I never got like in Vim. Um, oh, what was I gonna say? Yeah, so I never, I never got Vim. Um, so like to delete a line, it's uh, DD, but you can't see what you're gonna do first, right? So this, in this way, this makes much more sense because um, I can just highlight a line with X, and then there's also that like pesky problem in Vim where it's all based on the current line that you're on. So like, let's say I know. I'm, I'm, my cursor is here over A and async, but I know that I need to get to that first type, right? Um, that first option type on, line, on the next line. So in Vim, you would, you would go J and then you'd say F less than to get there, right? But in, but in Helix, I can just do F uh, less than to get there. Just, I don't have to jump that line right? Because F is multiple lines. Um, and it's the same thing with X. So X in Vim is like delete a character. Um, but it here, I, it just highlights a line, right? And, and so you can highlight, you can just keep hit, hitting X until you highlight something. And the, the reason I really loved Helix is because of the super deep integration with the, the tree sitter and also um, the LSPs. So there's no config. Once you install an LSP that's supported, um, which there are a lot, uh, here we can see this. So this is, these are all the LSPs that are supported. So if your language isn't supported, I would be very surprised. Um, because some of the, even some of the, like the esoteric stuff, like, um, like what, what I don't even, I haven't even heard of half this stuff. What is that? What is bicep? I have no idea what that is. Um, uh, but if it has a language server, it's probably, it's probably supported here. 
Um, so the, the reason why I love the, I love the, and it, there's basically no config here. I'll show you my helix config, um, helix config. Okay. So it's 20 lines, right? It doesn't have to be, I, I just, you know, I like certain things a certain way. I like relative line numbers. I want to see the line. So cursor line, uh, that, that dark line you see there, um, that's cursor line, uh, color modes. I actually forgot what color modes is. What is color modes? Uh, auto save. So it, it auto saves, um, every once in a while, uh, buffer line. So buffer line is when you have, um, uh, multiple files open. So multiple buffers. So here at the top, you can see I have a database RS and then I have a main RS. So I can switch between them with G and not only that, but I love this. I love this window too. I almost forgot about that. So G opens this go to method uh, menu and you could you could disable this once you get good, but I left it open because, you know, it doesn't. It, there's nothing wrong with it. So then you could see you could just go down the list and you could say, oh, okay, go to previous buffer, and then you could say GP, right? Uh, whoops, sorry, GP, G, and then you could say, okay, so I want to go to last line, GE. Oh, perfect. Yes, this is a 1700 line uh, main.rs file, um, and then you could go to like the line end, right? And you could go to uh, beginning, you can go to whatever, but what I really love is, um, I really love this buffer line because if you have a lot, it's like, they're kind of like tabs, um, in that way, but, and it's, you don't have to configure it, right? Um, you don't have to do anything. So the other thing that's in my thing is, uh, so oh, you do have to configure buffer line, but I, I said you don't have to configure it, but you do. Um, and then you, I have, I like the cursor shape to be different when I'm in insert mode. Um, versus normal mode versus selection mode, right? Underscore for selection. Uh, and then I have some LSP stuff that sort of helps it look not terrible. Um, I also have inlay hints on, so you can see that in um, here. You can see that all these uh, sort of muted out. They they tell you they tell you what the um, the types are for each thing, which is kind of nice because I like forget all the time what they are. And then if I did forget, I'd have to press space and then K, which is show docs for item under cursor. And then that'll, that'll tell you, but, um, yeah, I like the inlay hints. I might get rid of them cause they're kind of annoying, but you know, whatever. Um, and then I have, um, I have, this would be something I would never understand how to do in, in normal Vim with Vim script. And then with Lua, I still, I still wouldn't really be able to figure it out, but with, but with Helix, all you have to do is you kind of just say, okay, this is the mode in Toml. And then you say, okay, what is it? Right. It's, it's a uh, control J, right? So, so here, this is what this means is extend to line bounds, delete selection, paste after. And then this is the same thing, but it's move line up and paste before. So here I could just, uh, I'll show you, I'll show you how it, how it behaves. Um, so if I select this line here, or if I want to move this line, I don't have to select it. If I just press, I just press control J and I move this line down, control K moves it back up. Right. So just, just these two lines are like super powerful and there's, and it's not really code, right? It's like, I'm just calling random commands. So that's how you like can do your own custom, uh, key maps and stuff in Helix. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, Helix is, I can, I can talk about Helix forever. Um, but I probably shouldn't, um, there are some other cool things in Helix too. Oh, I was going to talk about the, uh, the LSP config. Okay. So the deep LSP config is more, is like M, right? The M or not matching. Uh, it's more like the, yeah, it's M. And then you could say around object, right? So what does that mean? Um, so here is where it like, you could do word like in Vim and you could do like big word, right? Oh, got cut off. And then you could do like paragraph or you could do the tree sitter stuff, type definition, function the arguments, a comment, a test, or the closest surrounding pair, right? So here, if I want to select this whole function, th there you go, right? Uh, MAF is how you select a whole function. I'm sure you can do this with NeoVim in some LSP configuration. It's not like you, NeoVim can, it's like a superset of Helix. NeoVim can obviously do everything that Helix can do, but it's just what, how long are you willing to Google around and like figure out how to configure NeoVim to do these things. With Helix, I don't have to do anything. It just works. I didn't have to do that. It just happened. And like I could do uh, MIF 
And then if I selected too much, I could just do, um, I could just do uh, Alt, Alt X, I think. What do I, what do I do? Alt X, yeah. To keep, so, like, keep selecting less of the, of the selection. Um, maybe I should do like a different, so I can do MAT to select this struct, right? Um, and then I could do uh, Shift X to keep, to keep highlighting, um, but I, I don't wanna do that. Um, and then I could also navigate with left bracket, I can go back to the previous function, to the next, to the previous, previous function, previous function. And I can go to the, the type too. I can go uh, square brace T to the previous type. Um, there, there's there's a lot of stuff. And also, um, it, 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 NeoVim came out with this in 0 0.5, and that was really the reason why I switched to NeoVim in the first place is this uh, sort of menu that pops up. So this is space, um, and then there's a file picker, right? So, but this is um, the symbol picker. And so you have uh, multiple options just like NeoVim, but I didn't configure this at all. It just comes with Helix. Um, so you can have the workspace symbol picker. So that's across everything. So like I have my database thing there. So I have a, I have a database struct inside of the database uh, RS file. Or I could just go like whatever. I can go to my, my props here. Um, yeah. Uh, so it's, it's very similar. Um, it, I mean, it's modal editing still, but it's just that you don't have to configure really anything if you don't want to, that's the main difference. But yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. It's, uh, amethyst. Um, it's, um, alacrity and then inside of alacrity it's helix and then there's some hammer spoon stuff, but yeah, but that's about it. I mean, that's my whole, that's my whole setup. Um, the LSP is really what is dry. This is Rust Analyzer, right? It's it's really what's driving it. Um, it's how I can like switch between um, things so quickly. So I could be here in a handler, right, uh, for like uh, the home page, and then I could, uh, you know, if I want to see the layout component, I could I could see that too. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. Uh, I hope that this answered uh, any questions that you had, Skull Trail. Um, I hope that that it helped you a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I I'll probably be switching um, again. Uh, I always try out new stuff. I I tried out Zed dot dev. I, I tried out Lapsy. Um, I'm always trying out different editors. Always always trying to like, you know, make things go faster. Um, cause no one really cares about how like, you know, like crazy your setup is, but they do care about how fast you can work. So I'm always trying new stuff to make, to make it better. So if I, if I switch a bunch of stuff around in like the next few months, I'll, I'll make another video. All right. That's it.